Hello there. Oh, don't be alarmed. I'm nothing to be concerned about. You're not usually here, though. May I ask who you are? Ah, a witch hunter. Looking for business, or do you already have a job at hand? Hmm, I figured so. <sighs> Come along. I'll take you to my hut. The children are yet to befall any harm. Oh, well, yes, I do mean the little ones' harm, in a way. I won't kill them. I'd never. But they're mine to do with as I please. I'm afraid there's been some sort of misunderstanding of terms, dear hunter. Let me ask you a question. If you were to perform a task with an agreed payment, but the payment was withheld through all formal routes, what would you do? Would you simply allow those who have not paid you to walk free? knowing that they effectively stole from you? Or would you take your payment through any means necessary? Hm. I figured such. The reason I took the children is exactly the same as why you would take the payment by force. Many moons ago, a sickness arrived in town. Not a single doctor had the skills required to fend off the illness. Although with two doctors, only a few years of experience between them. I don't particularly blame those two. But when most of the town was infected and only a few people could still rise to their feet, they ran into the forest towards me asking me to aid them. I examined the sick and realized what they had. Now the problem with witchcraft is that nothing is truly ever free. All magic I perform is a trade with some sort of higher being, be it a nature spirit or a demon, an angel or a ghost. All I do is broker deals between mortals in the higher realms of being, and take a bit of the payment as a fee to make a living. So in order to heal an entire village of an illness that would have surely killed them, I asked for a simple thing. All those children who were still healthy. It would be enough to provide nourishment for the spirits and I could easily broker the deal in order to heal them with that much leverage. So, all I did was trade some trinkets of equal value with a certain spirit, in order to temporarily get their magical healing hands to guide my own. With that, I healed the town, and then demanded my payment. But with all the villagers healthy again, there were more than enough of them to take up their torches and pitchforks in order to force me to flee the village, which means that they forced me to receive my payment in some other way, as they would not give me what I was owed. I sense that this is relatable to you. I suppose witch hunters aren't really welcomed into towns either these days. It's a barren time. What is that sword made of, if I may ask? Well, I'm just trying to make some small talk. My best guess is that your task is primarily to save the children and only secondarily to kill me. Would that be correct? Hmm. Well, that's to be expected. Did you happen to ask for payment up front? Hmm, big mistake. I'm 
not sure you can fend off an entire village on your own, even with the two swords. Assuming the worst in people. Me? <laughs> oh, Hunter, what a fool. I used to assume the good in people. I asked for payment after the deal was done, always. I ensured that the crops were bountiful before asking for payment for my blessing. I healed those who were sick before asking for their gold. And what do I get in return? Bartering. After deals are made. People who try to force me out. Trust me, Hunter. I want to assume the good in people. But dark times make for barren soul. Show me one villager who wished to pay me what I was owed. Just one. They collectively hired you, did they not? Promise a mound of gold if you return their children to them. And nobody you spoke to was opposed to that idea, correct? Well, I suppose it's not wholly your fault. Maybe you've simply more faith in humans than I do. After being betrayed and forced to pay a human's bill with a spirit so many times, I'm running out of things to sacrifice. That's the reason all those depictions of powerful witches are so ugly, you know? They give up their beauty, their physical strength, their possessions, their place in the world. Bartering with spirits isn't something that comes naturally. One must give away so much, even just to be able to speak with them, let alone to barter. That is why witches become other than human. They give up their humanity in order to become a witch. Does that sound logical to you? I suppose the why is debatable, but we all have our reasons. Some witches wish for power, others wish to speak with those they've lost. Me? <laughs> I became a witch to help people. There were no witches in this canton. Only about a dozen within a week's travels. If anyone encountered an issue that required a supernatural solution within a day, they would be resigned to death. So I studied. I dug up old books. I spoke to other witches, and eventually I gave up to things that were dearest to me in order to become a witch. My place in the world, in the middle of my life, first of all, no more speaking to my family or friends. No more living in a town where others could easily find me. I had to live in a forest, in a shack built for me by the spirits in return for my isolation. Second, I gave up my sense of touch. I cannot feel the warmth of the sun on my skin, nor the heat of the fire when it burns my hand. I cannot feel the cold, fresh water of the river when I bathe, nor the icy cold of my limbs freezing in the snow of winter. I do not feel the staff I hold, the forest ground under my feet, the cuts and bruises of running through the trees with reckless abandon. But in return, I get something that allows me to avoid harm. You can't see her, but a spirit guides my every step. When my lacking sense steers me towards danger, this cute little thing alerts me, and as an extra service, I'm allowed to bargain deals with all the supernatural. With this spirit, the forest as my translator, I can broker any deal. Great power, time to live, a chance at love. Returning those who have died. All I must do is find the right creature and the right price. And any service that a human cannot provide, I can. 
But enough about myself. You can see my shack from here. The spirits forbid me from willingly bringing a human further than this. The shack is their domain, and they allow me to live in it. It is a great gift. It is a gift given as part of my deal, with conditions to keep it. I have a difficult choice to make. The children are sacrifices. My original payment. I was supposed to give them to the spirit whose healing hands I was granted, with my valuable as a temporary means of payment until I received the children. However, even I desire something for myself once in a while. Yes, I am trying to bargain with you, dear hunter. I'm glad you've noticed. You see, your task is to safely return the children. Nothing more, nothing less. My own task is to ensure that I have a payment for the spirit. However, I already gave the spirit something that served as a temporary payment that it was satisfied with. I do not have any need for the children myself, but I would like the temporary payment to be returned to me. However, there's something I can work out. My proposition to you is as follows. I don't believe you'll be receiving the payment for this task. Returning to the village is useless, as they'll likely attack you to get out of paying. Instead, I wish to trade the children for you. The children can return to their parents, and your sword will pay the remaining debt with the spirit. And I will have something in return for the trinkets I gave to the spirit as initial payment. That being... You. Why I want you? Well, let's see. First of all, you're strong. Which hunters have to be strong? if I need to claim payment from another unwilling village. Having a nameless knight by my side increases my odds of receiving my payment greatly. With you at my side, I could simply demand payment, and even if they wished to force us out of the village, they would take great losses in fighting us both. Second, you're intelligent many a witch hunter would have taken a swing at me as soon as they saw me. The fact that you refrained from attacking on sight and talked to me first shows me that you know more about witches than most brutes who consider themselves witch hunters. You knew that my cabin would be unfindable without my aid and that my death would ensure that you could not find the children. And in this conversation, you've been clever enough to keep me talking without revealing much about yourself. Although, I must say, I am incredibly curious about you. That combined means you are clever, and I can always use a clever companion. Thirdly, I must admit that I am not immune to temptations of the flesh. You are... attractive. Perhaps not in a common way. The beauty standards of mundane humans don't affect me. My profession means speaking to three-headed deer spirits, witnessing acts of boundless depravity, and making no mention of them and regularly seeing the dead rise from the grave. I believe no mortal being would be able to do this without it affecting their mental state. But your form is... more than slightly attractive to me. I wish to see how you look without your armor, if I may be blunt. I wish to know where you came from. What made you pursue such a taboo career? 
What roads have you taken to get where you are now? <laughs> oh no, not all witches can read minds. To truly delve into someone's memories is a very advanced art, reserved only for those of great magical power. I have some magical senses, but far from enough for that. I must resort to asking you questions about your past. But let me return to my point. You are attractive to me. You would be useful to me, and you are intelligent enough to learn to become more than useful to me than most others would. That makes you valuable to me, much more than the children. The spirit will be satisfied with more shiny objects. So your sword and armor are more than enough. And therefore, what I offer you in return for you to become mine is the freedom of the children. A simple deal, no? Hmm. I suppose a promise from a regular witch is indeed worth very little. On the other hand, I've been telling you how I do my work since we met. Do you have enough faith in me to keep my word? Then perhaps a blood contract. Hold out your sword, if you will. Thank you. Now, I will prick my finger on the tip of your blade. <laughs> oh, it doesn't hurt me a bit, no. I can't feel this, remember? Now, all I have to do is write this seal on my palm and press it to yours. You will not be able to stray far from me, but only so long as I keep my end of the bargain, in this case releasing the children. Now, allow me to go to my shack first. Once the children come running out, the contract is sealed and the blood on your palm should be absorbed into you. If they do not come out, you can use your blade to fight me, but I swear to you, I will keep my end of this deal. <laughs> A pleasure doing business with you too, Hunter. I will see you again very soon. And we will discuss this further.